Welcome to my latest Skyrim challenge build, The Thief. Unlike most Thief builds I've made in the past, this one works as more of a smash and grab character, doing whatever it takes to get her hands on whatever she wants. As this is a part of my challenge build series, it also means we are only using the 6 skills that are raised at the start of the game and aren't allowed to level any of the others. Before getting into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, so that you can keep watching some of the best builds on YouTube. The Thief didn't have an easy childhood. Watching her parents have their skulls caved in and being left with their blood coating her fur made her outlook towards the world a very oppositional one. It was her against the world, and she would take whatever she wanted to get by. Her early days as a thief were met with mixed results. She was light on her feet, but often careless, leading to her sometimes being spotted by those she was stealing from. She never had a problem with dealing with these events though, a blade through the gut dealt with the problem in a matter of seconds, and her buyers rarely cared about blood stains on the items. As time progressed on, there was one individual in particular who regularly bought her stolen goods, a Breton merchant with a wicked smile and a fondness for large piles of gold. Having a reliable buyer made life a lot easier for her, and even led to the thief travelling with the merchant once she decided to move cities. There was plenty to steal anywhere she went, but finding a safe and reliable fence was always going to be a greater challenge. Instead of sticking to their normal working relationship, the merchant suggested they team up. The thief would get them all the valuables they ever needed, and the merchant would sell them on and help plan out other ways to earn even more septims. The pair travelled all around Tamriel, stealing, scamming and selling from everyone they met. On the rare occasion they were found out, the thief gladly withdrew a blade and wove a dance of death ensuring they got out alive no matter how many others had to die. The Breton never seemed fond of violence, and always would seek to either flee or hide, instead of standing and fighting. This didn't bother the Khajiit too much though, she had never come across a fight she couldn't easily win. Her ego would eventually lead to her downfall though. The duo were in a village, and the merchant was trying to con the inhabitants into buying back goods the thief had stolen from them the previous night. Someone was causing a bit of a disturbance near the front of the crowd, and the thief decided to use the distraction to try and pickpocket an old woman next to her. The lady was blind, so she wasn't worried about being noticed. This carelessness meant she fumbled when trying to lift her purse, and the old woman cried out. The merchant tried to calm everyone, but they started to draw whatever weapons they had. The thief withdrew her sword and dagger, eager to spill some blood and loot the corpses, but seeing the merchant flee made her reluctantly realise that there were far too many people for even her to deal with. Instead, the two fled into the woods, and would eventually come across the campfire around which all of our other characters gather. If you're more interested in hearing about these events, make sure you go back and watch the merchant build, in which I detail all that happened around the campfire with the pair. The following morning, as the group were heading towards Skyrim, the thief was scouting the edges of their path, and ran into a group of Thalmor soldiers. One of the elves stepped forwards and withdrew his blade, but the Khajiit struck out first, cutting through the sinews in his wrist. A curved smile formed in her face, eager for the chance to spill some more elven blood. But the leader of the group raised a gloved hand, and a wave of fire came forth, scorching the cat's fur and causing her to drop her weapons. She is then used as a hostage to capture the merchant too, and ends up dragged away and sent to Helgen for execution. The skills for this build are Sneak, Archery, One-Handed, Lockpicking, Pickpocket and Alchemy. Sneak is the most essential of these skills. A lack of armour means staying hidden will help no end in keeping us alive. In addition, the damage perks in the Sneak Tree will significantly improve our damage output. Leveling Sneak is incredibly easy with this build, as all you need to do is land Sneak dual wielding power attacks and you gain a ridiculous amount of experience for the skill. Archery is our ranged offensive skill, letting us deal damage from a distance. This character doesn't primarily work as a stealth archer, but it's still an effective playstyle to employ whenever you don't want to get too close to your adversary. One-handed is the main damage dealer of this build, as this character wields a sword in the right hand and a dagger in the left. This setup gives a good mix of speed, reach and damage, making us a versatile fighter overall. With both one-handed and archery, make sure to prioritise the damage perks first of all. Lockpicking will make this challenge build a lot easier to play due to the fact we won't be relying on the tower stone. 
As always though, I wouldn't recommend investing any perks into this tree. Pickpocket on the other hand only really becomes useful after you've invested a perk or two into it. Not only will stealing enchanted jewellery help improve the character, but we can steal gold too so we have a good supply for skill training. In addition, you may end up wanting to pickpocket arrows in order to ensure you don't end up running low on them at any point, seeing as you won't be able to buy any. Finally, the crafting skill of this build is Alchemy. This will provide us with so many different bonuses. Through Alchemy, we can turn invisible, boost our damage output, paralyze enemies and do a ton of other things too. As you all likely know by now, there'll be some specific potions I like to use in the description, but feel free to leave comments with your own. When levelling with this build, I advise splitting between health and stamina, but focusing more on health. You don't want to be taking hits, but at some point you will, so the added health is important for giving you a chance to flee from an unexpected fight if need be. The primary standing stone of this build is the Thief Stone. This build levels incredibly quickly compared to my other challenge builds in this series, and the Thief Stone will just add to this. If you're looking to mix things up, then I recommend either the Serpent or Shadow Stone. These essentially work as a free paralysis poison or invisibility potion once every day, and can prove incredibly helpful on particularly challenging missions. As a Khajiit, keep in mind you also have Night Eye, so you've got no reason to not be travelling around in the darkness. As weapons for this build, you will want the best sword, knife and bow you can get your hands on. From the Dark Brotherhood, you can end up with the Blade of Woe, and this will be the ideal dagger for this character. In terms of swords, the best one you can likely end up with will be the Nightingale Blade, but feel free to leave some other suggestions down below if you think there's any better ones. If you end up with this sword though, then you'll also get the Nightingale Bow, which is a great weapon. As you can tell from the video footage, I was just using the best weapon drops I found, which were actually quite terrible. This was purely for the interest of time, but shows that the character can still devastate with basic weapons. The armour for this build is the full set of the Shrouded Outfit, minus the robes, which will be replaced by Cicero's clothes. These pieces will muffle your footsteps, boost sneaking, double sneak attack damage with one-handed weapons, and increase the damage of one-handed weapons by 20%. Although this particular loadout doesn't provide you the highest possible bonuses, it doesn't look quite as ridiculous as when you equip Cicero's hat. The main bonuses you're missing from this set are Fortify Marksman and Alchemy, so keep your eyes open for any rings and necklaces with these enchantments. Keep in mind you can always take these from people's pockets if you need to. As a quick additional note, you can't wear light armour when in combat, but you can potentially wear it outside of it meaning things like the Thieves Guild armour or Blackguard's armour can potentially be useful for pickpocketing or lockpicking, but make sure you're not wearing them when you're not thieving. The main two factions for this build will be the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood. As a thief, you will get most of your work from the Thieves Guild. Don't play as a standard member though. This character has a violent side and won't care about the no-killing rule the guild has, gladly slitting throats if it means the job becomes a little easier. If you haven't played through the Thieves Guild in a more violent way, and more kind of rebellious way, then I'd recommend it. It offers a really new and unique approach to something that's quite familiar to most players. The Dark Brotherhood will let the Thief use her more brutal side, her skills easily letting her transition between Thief and Assassin, in addition, this faction will provide us with the majority of our gear, so it's an essential one to join. As a stealth based build, this character won't be using any followers. I didn't pick up a follower at all with this character, as this character works instantly from the point you leave Helgen, providing you make sure you level your skills a little first. When you're inside Helgen, make sure to land some sneak attacks on Raylof or anyone else that you're fighting just so that you can level up Sneak and One-Handed a little faster. Ideally, once you do leave Helgen, you'll be at level 3, so you'll have a couple of perk points to play with too. This character plays as an incredibly violent thief, and by god is this a fun way to play. 
Normally when I play a thief character, I go all in on stealth and non-violence, avoiding conflict wherever possible. With this one though, I killed anything that looked like it would remotely get in my way, going for much more of a smash and grab style. Try to sneak up on your enemies and do a dual wielding power attack whilst hidden for the most amount of damage, but feel free to fight dirty too. I would dart in and out of range of my enemy, using anything I could to keep some distance from them, so they couldn't fight back. We can't afford to take many hits, so don't try and fight fair, as you will almost always lose. If you need to stay at longer ranges with your opponent, then pull out your bow and pelt them with arrows. Make sure you have plenty of poisons to use as well to give you an edge. The most useful of these for me were poisons of slow and paralysis. Paralysis in particular is great for just blitzing through an area. In addition to being a brutal and devious combatant, you also do play as a more of a conventional thief. The jobs you get from a thieves guild will give you a fairly regular gold supply, and give you the occasional break from outright combat. In addition, make sure you're regularly doing alchemy runs to ensure you can make all the potions and poisons you need in order to complete your missions. Thank you all for watching my latest challenge build. Don't forget to leave a comment below telling me what you thought, and like the video if you haven't already, so that I can keep making videos for all of you. And if you aren't subscribed yet, then why not? If you are subscribed, then turn on notifications too, so that you can be a part of a notification squad, and be among the first to watch my videos when they come out. I hope you're all excited for the build coming out next week, and I look forward to seeing you all there.